from the studios of Farm Journal Broadcast. This is Ag Day. Calving in the middle of a blizzard. We just kind of said some extra prayers and um, wished for the best. We returned to North Dakota to see how ranchers are faring after the storm. Farmers on the front line. We have stockpiled our wheat production and our sunflowers, but we aren't able to sell them. So I would say it is the beginning of the end. How farmers in Ukraine are fighting to keep going as the FBI issues an important warning for the ag community right now on Ag Day. Good morning, I'm Clinton Griffiths. The FBI is putting the ag industry on alert to watch out for cyber criminals. The agency warning that potential ransomware attacks could impact farmers and ag cooperatives during planting and harvesting seasons. Now they say cyber actors may perceive cooperatives as lucrative targets with a willingness to pay due to the time sensitive role they play in agricultural production. The FBI says six grain companies were targeted last fall and two others have already been attacked this year. In a public advisory, federal officials say a significant disruption of grain production could impact the entire food chain and they're calling on farmers to take defensive measures now against the potential threat. I recently spoke with a cyber expert about the steps farmers can take to try and protect themselves. That's kind of the good news is we're not talking necessarily about rocket science, right? We're talking about having strong username and password policies. We're talking about having uh, something called multi-factor authentication. Uh, we're talking about having backups for your data so that if you are attacked and your data is encrypted, you have another source. Uh, you know, that kind of uh, thing, uh, those kinds of um, controls are actually very, very effective in stopping um, or at least deterring ransomware actors. Now he tells me hackers are generally opportunistic adding that if you are targeted, it's a good idea to contact law enforcement and the FBI. In some cases, the FBI may be able to help unlock frozen files. We have more resources on our website over at agweb.com. Just look for this story. It's estimated Ukrainian farmers have planted about 617,000 acres of spring crops so far this year. That adds up to about 20% of the expected area. That's according to the Ukrainian Ag Ministry. Now, the country had warned of a potential decline of 20% plantings this year due to the Russian invasion. Ed Lavendera spoke with farmers who are losing their livelihoods because of the war. Serhi Yaichuk runs a one-man dairy operation. He has six cows on a little farm just 15 miles from the front lines of the battlefield in southern Ukraine. But neither Russian soldiers or falling rockets have stopped the 49-year-old from tending to his work. That is Sergei's house there, just in the distance, and there is an unexploded rocket that landed this close. Landed here about a week ago. Did you hear that rocket land? Everything happened before my eyes. The explosions erupted all around him when this strike hit. Russian rockets often target his village of 500 people. We were covered with dust, just dust and shrapnel all the way here. I fell to the ground, crawling, not feeling my legs or arms. It was scary. For those who have not gone through this, you would not believe it. Sergei keeps one eye on his herd and the other eye on the war. So these are Sergei's six dairy cows. And if you notice, he has them spread out. He wants to separate them so they don't all get killed in one strike. He must keep the cows alive. This is the life of a farmer in Ukraine. Maxim Krivenko and his family grow the traditional Ukrainian crops of wheat and sunflower on these lush, wide open fields near the village of Yavkine. But the war has upended his business. It's been unfortunate for all of us. Basically, everything has shut down and we aren't working now. Maxim says the cost of fuel and grain seeds have skyrocketed. It's difficult to find parts to repair farm machinery. He's supposed to plant this year's wheat crop in the coming weeks, but if the fighting returns to this land, it won't happen. So this is the storage area where they keep their sunflower seeds but they haven't been able to sell it because of the war. Maxim is also stuck with an entire season sunflower seed harvest. It just sits in this storage space. 
Will this war kill your business? <laughs> it's already killed it. We have stockpiled our wheat production and our sunflowers, but we aren't able to sell them. So I would say it is the beginning of the end. Ukraine is considered the world's breadbasket, along with Russia, producing 30 percent of the world's wheat exports. The United Nations says this war is creating a food production crisis not seen since World War II. Thousands of Ukrainian farmers now find themselves on the front lines of this war, and their growing fields of wheat and sunflower have been turned into debris fields for missiles and rockets and other explosives. The wreckage of recent battles still sit in the farm fields. The body of a Russian soldier is buried next to this ammunition supply truck. Farm or fight is the choice facing frontline farmers. Serhii Yechuk has already faced this life and death decision. When the Russians invaded this village last month, Serhii joined the fight. He was shot in the shoulder. Oh, wow. If the Russians come back, do you want to fight again? What else can we do? I'll take my pitchfork and go fight. I will defend my village until the end. When the war returns, the harvest will have to wait. Now in other parts of the country, the extreme fire danger is continuing for another day. Meteorologist Matt Yurisovic joins us. Matt, there's also even more snow on the way. Yeah, Clint, that's right. We've got more snow on the way for parts of the northern plains, but we start with our fire danger for today, and it goes right through central parts of New Mexico and even up into eastern Colorado where we see that pink shaded area. This is extremely dry ground conditions, very dry air, and strong gusty winds could combine to rapidly spread any fire that would start. So you need to make sure that you are taking every precaution possible there, especially in the red and pink shaded areas there in New Mexico, up into Colorado, and even parts of Nebraska and uh, Kansas, as well as Texas. And moving on to talk more about the colder side of things, yeah, we've got more snow in the west. And we are talking about uh, coming up through the Rockies, northern Rockies there with lower elevation rain, some higher elevation snow. But then as this system really starts to wrap up, as we get into the day on Saturday, it is going to start pumping out snow across places in eastern Montana, northern parts of Wyoming, and western South Dakota and North Dakota, where we could see over a foot or two of snow in some of those higher elevations. And you can see those snow totals right there. Southern parts of Montana and Parts of Wyoming looking like the big winners there in those higher elevations could see over two feet of snow. And lots of people up working this morning, including possibly this little guy, Katie in eastern Iowa, sharing this one, saying that her son said, quote, Mom, when the sun comes up, it's working time. You can see he's going to turn into being a big helper on the farm. I'll have more on your forecast coming up. All right, thanks, Matt. The EPA is opening the door for another oil seed to be considered a feedstock for renewable diesel. The announcement coming this week, EPA proposing that renewable diesel, jet fuel, and other biofuels can be made from canola oil and qualify as an advanced biofuel under the renewable fuel standard. Now, that's big news for farmers in Canada, which is the world's largest canola grower. Currently, 5 to 8 percent of Canadian canola is used as biofuel in that country, the U.S. and Europe. Industry experts say it could jump to as much as 20% by the end of this decade. There are plans to more than double production to 26 million tons in the next three years. Wheat prices soften again on Wednesday. A word of caution for producers coming up next. And an April blizzard was no joke for livestock owners in North Dakota. We follow up with producers as they dig out today in the country. Ag Day Weather, brought to you by AGI Nico. AGI Nico dryers have an average of one to two pounds heavier test weight per bushel than screen dryers. They can also save you 30% on average in fuel savings. That's money in your pocket. Visit aggrowth.com slash Nico for more information. We're joined today by Brian Basting with Advanced Trading. Uh, Brian, as we talk about this wheat market, Obviously, we've been watching, you know, the wheat condition here in the U.S. Uh, we've been looking at prices, which seem pretty good, talking about what's going on in the Black Sea region. But boy, there's a lot of world factors at play here. 
you summarize that well, Clinton, that in contrast to corn, for example, where the closure of the ports has really supported the corn market in terms of limiting the exports from Ukraine. Ukraine is a key world exporter, but as we speak, record amounts of wheat are being shipped from Australia, Argentina, India, even Brazil is shipping more wheat than usual. So all these other countries have stepped forward and are aggressively shipping wheat. So we're, the U.S. is not gaining that competitive advantage that it is, for example, in corn with the closure of the Ukraine ports. So just a caution note there that wheat is looking at some different fundamentals from the export side compared to um, corn, especially. And as you mentioned, though, we've got some dry conditions out in the west, particularly in southern um, Kansas, southwest Oklahoma and Texas that bear monitoring. You know, as we talk about the wheat price here, uh, and for wheat growers here at home, uh, is there the risk there that, that we could get too bullish about this market? I agree with that. Uh, well said. I think there is a risk that to get caught up in the bullish enthusiasm because we've got some tremendously high prices currently, not only for 2022, Clinton, but also looking at 2023, because I do think we're going to see more acreage planted wheat here this fall, particularly in the Northern Hemisphere. So I would defend your balance sheet as a wheat producer. Look at this 2022 crop that hopefully it's going to be a good crop coming on here um, and defend those those prices we've got today. Because as I mentioned earlier, we're looking at some strong world competition right now, even granting that Ukraine may not be shipping short term. Yeah, as we know, wheat is a it's a global grain and lots of countries grow it and uh, are willing to ship it around the world. Brian, appreciate it as always. Thank you so much for being here. We'll be back with more Ag Day coming up in just a minute. To talk with Brian one-on-one, -on -one, call Advanced Trading at 800-664-2314 or head online to advanced-trading.com. Meteorologist Matt Yurisavik joining us here. We have a new drought monitor, Matt. Now, compared to the root zone, which changes pretty quickly, the drought monitor is much slower, but it has changed a little bit. Yeah, we've seen some improvements, northern plains, northern Rockies, because of the big systems that we've seen over the past week, and likely we'll see more improvements over the next week or so in some of those same areas. And more of that higher elevation snow and some rain possible in the northern plains heading into the weekend. That will help these areas even more as we head into next week. But we've seen some of that improvement here. Northern plains, especially parts of western North Dakota and western South Dakota, even saw a little bit of improvement here along the deep south. Not a lot just a little bit and we are still going to be mainly dry in the west but more rain and mountain snow back there will help next week's edition of the drought monitor hopefully improve a little bit as we get closer towards spring so here's a look at the precipitation over the next 10 days and we are going to see again this is over the weekend here and then another system coming out of uh, Canada next week could bring in more rainfall and then we've got another system next week bringing more rain down into places especially in Texas that really need it but again lots of precipitation out in the west northern Rockies northern plains and across the east as well so very active pattern continues across the country and here's a look at that snow again northern Rockies and then as that system wraps up gets a little bit stronger we could be talking about over a foot of snow possible in parts of Montana Wyoming and then up into the Dakotas as well so here's a look at what that looks like on our map. We've got high pressure over the southeast, a cold front weakening, and here comes some rain with a warm front from that system in the west. That's the low right there that is going to wrap up, bring a lot of that moisture up into uh, the northern plains. But you can also see this right here. This is a dry line, and as it moves eastward, we could see strong thunderstorms uh, kind of form along and just ahead of that dry line. Where That's where we could be seeing those supercell thunderstorms, maybe that tornado threat as well. So that's a place to watch right along the dry line, moving eastward into Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas through Friday evening. Then as we get into Saturday, this is where things start to wrap up. That snow really gets going in the northern plains, especially in the mountains of Montana and the cold front bringing showers and storms as it heads through the east coast. Temperatures remain very warm ahead of the storm, but behind it, cooler air filtering on in. We'll keep an eye on that as we head into next week. A very active pattern. That's a look around the country. Now let's take a look at the weather where you live.
Rockford, Illinois, heavy rain, likely a high of 61 degrees. Amarillo, Texas, strong storms and gusty winds, a high of 87. And Norris, Montana, heavy snow, likely a high of 34 degrees. The White House says it's working to empower rural communities and transform the way federal agencies partner with Rural America to create economic opportunity. Now, to that end, it's announcing the Rural Partners Network. It's to make sure people in rural America get their fair share of federal dollars and programs. It will work on a couple of levels. First, locally, there will be one-on-one -on -one help on site from USDA and other agency experts in identifying possible federal programs and navigating the application process. Now at the federal level, there will be coordination of rural programs among the agencies that have them. A member of the Biden administration coming on AgriTalk this week to discuss it. We are putting new staff on the ground in 25 communities across the country. These staff will wake up every day with the mandate of working with local leaders, not just elective leaders, but business leaders, economic development officials, other figures in the community to identify, to work with the community to identify economic development needs and then contact and navigate the federal departments and agencies to figure out what federal dollars, what federal program can help those communities meet those needs. So that's the, key, the first key piece of this puzzle in that we're okay. starting in 25 communities with a goal of expanding. Now it's starting out in Georgia, Kentucky, Mississippi, New Mexico, and certain tribes in Arizona with plans to expand it later this year. The latest Rural Main Street Index continues to remain healthy. The latest survey of rural bankers from Creighton University now sits at 62. That's the 17th straight month above growth neutral of 50, but down from March's 65.4. One interesting note here. When asked this month if President Biden's emergency waiver of summer ethanol E15 would have a positive impact, fewer than four out of 10 bankers, or just 39%, expected it would. Farmers and ranchers are trying to thaw out from those recent spring storms. We'll check in with producers in North Dakota as they assess the damage next. Your next piece of equipment is on machinerypeat.com. Search equipment from dealerships across the country to find what you're looking for. Only on MachineRepeat.com. As the dig out continues following last week's historic blizzard in North Dakota, farmers and ranchers are getting a better look at the damage and the losses from the storm. Jody Kurzman of Ag Day affiliate KFYR has more and just a warning, some of the photos you're about to see your graphic, but we're told all of the calves that you'll see survived the storm. The historic blizzard of 2022, captured here in this cell phone video. The wind was just unbelievable. What's also unbelievable is that the cattle in the photos and videos taken by Carrie Roth all survived. The images are powerful. They show cattle trying to escape the wind. Low visibility made it tough for her husband Brent to feed the cattle and shoveling huge drifts just to get to the barn. It was an awful feeling. The Roths farm and ranch just south of Mott. They had just started calving when the storm hit. By Wednesday, Brent and Carrie could no longer get to the cattle to check them. We just kind of said some extra prayers and um, wished for the best. During the storm, they lost just one calf. But as the snow begins to melt, they're finding more losses. Calves are getting sick. Cows are all mixed up from being confined. The North Dakota Stockmen's Association has heard similar stories from hundreds of producers from across the state. As the snow melts, they expect the loss reports will increase. Many areas, there's huge drifts, and so livestock that maybe perish might be covered in, in snow, and so we have to wait for some time and maybe for some snow to melt to reveal some of those losses. Meantime, producers like the Roths are looking for the silver lining. We're always grateful for moisture. Moisture that for too long has been lacking. And while one storm won't eliminate the drought, they are hopeful it might be a step 
in the right direction. In Bismarck, I'm Jody Kurzman, reporting for your news leader. All right, thanks, Jody. And just a reminder, there could be more challenges ahead as more snow is expected later this weekend. And that's all our time today. We're sure glad you tuned in from all of us here at Ag Day. I'm Clinton Griffiths. Have a great day.